Hi everybody, I'm Joran Beasley and I'm going to try and give you guys my first YouTube video here on how to use Flask as your back end with React as your front end. All served through Flask. There's lots of videos out there showing you how to make an API in Flask that then React can talk to and all kinds of stuff like that, but there's not a lot of information on how to use Flask to serve your React application. As a Python developer, this is something that was interesting to me and I thought I'd maybe show, share with you the steps to accomplish this. It's not very hard. I'm gonna walk you through everything from installing the requirements to getting it up and running. Let's go ahead and get started. To start with, go to nodejs.org and download the version of Node.js for your operating system. I'm running Windows. This will install NPM as well. So now let's go ahead and install it. And while it's installing, go ahead and just install with the default settings. And while it's installing, we'll go ahead and we'll jump over into our favorite IDE. Mine is PyCharm, so that's what I'm going to use. But I'm going to try and do this in a fairly platform agnostic way. And we'll go ahead and create a Flask backend folder. And it's really pretty quick to install Node. It might be done already. Nope, not quite. And now that we have our Flask backend, let's go ahead and create the static folder. And we'll also create the templates folder. Now these are just your standard Flask setup folders. And now we'll go ahead and create a main.py to run our Flask app. And I can see down here that it finished installing. We'll just click finish. Now that we have Node installed, go ahead and open up a terminal. I'm just going to use the PyCharm terminal and say npm install minus g for globally and we want to just install yarn we're going to use yarn to actually deal with all of our packages here it works a little bit better in my opinion now i'm going to go ahead and use yarn to globally add so i'm going to say yarn global add and i want to install create react app and i also want react scripts and it'll take it a second to install while that's doing that we'll go ahead and run our main and say import flask and if you don't have it you'll need to do pip install flask i'll go ahead and open a new terminal and just show you pip install flask and that'll go ahead and install flask we want to create our app we say app equals flask dot capital flask and we need to give it a name we'll use main that's kind of the standard and then we'll say def my index and we're just going to return hello world here close this terminal and we'll go back here it looks like it's done let's go ahead and we're gonna pause on our flask backend and we're gonna create our react app we're just gonna use the create react app that we just installed and you could do the TypeScript or whatever we're just gonna create a normal react JS app and we're gonna call it react front end and while that's installing we'll just come back here and finish up our flask app we'll say app dot run debug equals true we don't need to run it in debug, it just makes debugging it easier. And we need to add this as our root in route. So we're going to say app.route. And we're just going to say this is at our route forward slash, our, our root route. And instead of this, we're going to actually render our template. And we're just going to go ahead and take care of that now. Flask.render template. And we're going to call it index.html because that's what it will be. And we're also going to give it a variable token. And we're just going to set that to whatever we want. Hello plus React. It could be anything. We don't need to. It doesn't matter what it is. All right. So now that our front end has finished installing, if we open it up, we'll see that we have a few folders here. Uh, there is an index.html here. This is the index that's rendered when we run our builds. And we also have our React app here and our app.js here. And we're going to edit both of those, but not yet. First thing we need to do is cd into our directory that we just got. And now we're going to type npm run eject. Now, React's going to warn us that this is irreversible and all that stuff. That's all great. That's fine. We are A-OK -okay with that. We're just going to say yes. And what this does is it unpacks it into a... Uh, a config folder it unpacks a webpack.config.js as well as a paths.js that we can use to configure our, our build process all right so now that we've unpacked it if we go up here again 
it'll take it a second. There's our config folder, it just showed up. We can go ahead and we can edit our paths.js. And the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to change where we're building to. We want to go to the parent folder of the React front end, and then we want to put it at our Flask back end, and then in our static folder. But we don't want to just put it in our static folder because the build folder gets nuked every time it gets e everything in it gets erased and put back in there. So we're going to put it under a React subheading. So the first thing we do is we change our app build entry to be our path to our actual where we want our files to go. And then next thing we need to do is go into our webpack config.js here. <clears throat> and you'll notice there's these statics. And what we want to do is we want to get rid of all of those. So we can do it manually like this and just find all of them. I'm just going to use control R in PyCharm to just replace all of them at once. I'm just going to say I want to get rid of all the statics. And there's eight of them. There's six left now. So I'm going to go ahead and replace all of them. And so we went ahead and we replaced all of them. The last thing we need to do in this webpack config is we need to tell it where to put our HTML file. And that's down here at line 473 on HTML webpack plugin. We just need to add to our config. We need to add a file name to it. So we're going to say file name. And our file name is just going to be our, say, path.resolve. And this just gives us an absolute path. And we want to go up one folder from our build folder. And we want to go up one more folder from that. So once we go up one level from our build, remember we're inside static at that point. We want to really be in Flask backend. And then we want to go into our templates folder. And lastly, just we want to save it as index.html. And so what that's going to do is it's going to copy this index.html on over. Now let's go ahead and make this interact with Flask by adding a little script tag here. And we're just going to say window.token equals and here we're just going to attach our, our Flask token. So we're going to say uh, Flask token. I think that's what we called it, right? Let's go take a look. Oh, we just called it token. So let's just call it token here. <clears throat> and remember, this is passed in through our Flask backend. And then we'll be, it'll be accessible everywhere in our, our React app under window.token. So let's go ahead and go into our app. And we're just going to add a little thing to... To call it out, we're gonna say, and we're gonna say my token equals, and then we're gonna use the single curly brace, which is React's template thing, and we're just gonna say window dot token. Again, that's what we set up here in the React thing, and that's also what we're passing in from our Flask backend. So now we've gone ahead and we've set almost everything up. The last thing we need to do is go into our package.json, and we need to go ahead and we need to add a home page variable. And this will let us tell React where to put the links to our JavaScript and CSS and stuff. And we want to go to our root, static, and then our, our build, which was React. I think that was it. Let's double check. Static, React, yep, that is definitely where we want to go. And so that will let us know to point to that URL when we, when we build our index. And so now we can just say npm run build and it'll take it a second and we'll see all this stuff get populated up in here you might have an error if this is the first time you're installing saying you're missing this plugin it's Babel plugin transform react JSX and that allows it to transform the react language into regular HTML or, or whatever I'm not sure exactly but it's really easy we just say yarn add and we paste in that name that it told us it was missing Babel plugin transform react JSX and you'll notice it did go ahead and it created the react folder up here and it started to put things in before it ran into that missing dependency I think that's the only dependency that you'll be missing but we'll find out here when we run build again hopefully it builds And it finishes building, and we look up here, and it takes it a second. There it goes. We now have in our React, we have some CSS JS folders, and inside our templates, we do not have our HTML. All right, so if we actually delete this path.resolve, we apparently don't need a 
absolute path and just leave it as a relative path I think we're okay now let's go ahead and rebuild it and once it finishes building we see now that we do have our index.html and in here we do call out our our URLs to static react.js and if we go over here we hopefully see our little bit of script tag where we include our window token there it is everything looks great let's go ahead and let's try and fire up our react at or our backend so we'll cd back into our main backend and we're just going to call out our file and there it goes it's being served now in debug mode and now if we go to localhost port 5000 we see our react app running and we see our token that we passed in from our react backend so there you go we are serving our react app with flask and anytime we want to go ahead and run it we just have to say or in our front end we say npm run build and that'll build up our current app and place it in here ready to be served with our main flask app and it's great uh, there are some drawbacks you lose the hot reload that it offers with the built-in debug server of npm and there's some other reasons why you might not want to do this i'll cover that in another episode perhaps let me know in the comments if you like this video and would like to see some more my next episode, I'll either separate some services out into Docker, including Flask and React, and probably a database as well. Alternatively, I could do a more advanced Flask tutorial or a Django tutorial or running React as a front end to Django as well. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks.